Hello friends. So let's talk about a typical interview process at any tech company. Uh, basically, you can expect anywhere between three to six rounds of interviews, and uh, those interviews are going to be under three different categories. So categories would be uh, first behavioral interview, second would be system design, and third would be technical. Uh, the ordering doesn't matter, but overall you can imagine the questions to be asked amongst these three main categories. Now behavioral interview as the name suggests it is basically to check that what kind of a person you are are you a good culture fit or uh, do you fit well do you work well with the teams um, are you someone who is annoying to work with or a, a nice person to work with uh, that sort of thing second one is the system design so system design portion is usually scheduled for a higher and little bit senior level people uh, it doesn't mean that even if you are a junior level, you would not be asked such questions, but they would be usually at the elementary level. But if you are up uh, and senior in the hierarchy, definitely there would be quite a lot of emphasis on system design. Uh, the third and one of the most important one is the technical interview. So the purpose of technical interview is to basically judge your data solving and problem solving uh, capabilities. Plus, it also wants to know that how well can you code? uh what is uh, how do you handle pressure and also can you come up with the optimal solution using the fundamental principles of computer science so what do i mean by fundamental principles of computer science uh, basically i'm referring to data structures and algorithms because uh there are, for a given problem there can be a number of solutions but the purpose of the technical interview is to find the most optimal solution with the tools that are available to you so uh, the two most powerful tools at your disposal is the data structures and the subsequent algorithms that has been developed by multiple people uh, and your job is to come up with the optimal solution under the given time frame so question would come in your mind that why there is so much emphasis on data structures and algorithm why not anything else uh, and believe me like if you are applying for some let's say smaller scale company or for a specific role uh, they would rather focus on main more on the technology rather than these like data structure and algorithm related problems and you can expect to encounter tho those throughout your career as well but uh, when i speak about like top tier company or core tech companies they have the most amount of emphasis on the data structure and algorithm related problems and there is a very clear reason for that uh, the reasoning is number one they wants to check you that how well do you perform under pressure number two they also wants to know that uh, are you able to come up with the optimal solution for any given problem because the thing is many a times these companies like companies such as google facebook amazon microsoft whatever and also a bunch of other like top tier tech companies they don't know what projects are you going to be working on when they hire you and that is not the case in smaller companies because smaller companies they have very strict definitions uh, and duties defined in the, in their resumes uh, typically if you see any job posting of any of these big big companies uh, they would be quite generic in terms of their wording because they usually hire the top talent around the world and then they expect them uh, to throw on various teams various products and then expect them to start building out the best software solutions possible like it's quite common in these big companies that you would be working anywhere between like six to ten teams just under the span of maybe like uh three to four years meanwhile at some other more conventional companies you might stick to the same team throughout your career in some cases so that's why they hire someone who can basically come up with the optimal solution plus uh, hiring someone they are they are obviously paying the compensation sometimes in the ballpark range of uh like 300 400 thousand dollars something like that that's a huge amount of money uh for like a 25 year old or th even a 30 year old so that's why they wants to make sure that they are getting the best efficiency out of their investment because from their perspective you are a great asset and an investment and they wants to make sure to have a person who is well vetted by various people so that's why there is so much emphasis on uh, having these rigorous interviews and uh, they go on for uh, many times like three to six months as well in some companies like google uh, plus there is one more reasoning i can find for having such an emphasis on data structure and algorithm related problems and that is to see that 
how well can you handle the pressure and what is your thinking process because typically when you are solving these kinds of problems you are not just giving out the solutions basically you are understanding the problem you are asking clarifying questions to to your interviewer or trying to understand more about the scenario plus on top of that you are also coming up with your thought process that okay uh this should be the elementary approach now this is how i can do it better uh this these are the trade-offs between choosing one data structure over the other data structure uh this would be the time complexity this would be the space complexity is my solution going to be scalable for hundreds of thousands of people or will it break under uh, such humongous pressure so these are all the questions that the companies wants to check from the candidates that can they come up with like the most optimal thinking and bet better approach so these are the reasoning for these technical interviews on top of that te technical interviews they are related to data structures and algorithms but the problem statements in themselves they are not designed to have explicit wording like that typically they are going to ask you questions that are rather rudimentary and of real life scenario because if you see any tech companies that, that is what they are trying to do they are trying to mimic a real world scenario and try to provide solutions for that uh, and same thing they are going to do in the interviews as well so if i have to give you an example so the question i'm about to show you would be one of the typical type of questions that you can expect in your interview so your interviewer is going to be something like this that let's say that you are currently stranded in an island and in that island uh, there are 51 people on this island now amongst those 51 people 50 people has the exact same weight and it is your job to determine that which is the one person who has slightly higher weight so the weight difference is not so much it's very just a slightly higher but all of these 50 people they have the exact same weight and our job is to determine how we are going to do it so this would be one of the typical like technical interview uh, kind of a questions like this is a very easy one but i'm just giving you for the sake of example so in this case you are also told that uh, you are given a weight scale and in this scale you can make the measurements and you can find out that which person has how much weight and you can note down all the results whatever you want to do with that now there is also one more condition on the scale that at one point at at one time you can put as many people as you want so you can imagine the scale to be like a huge scale where every single person even if like all 51 people wants to stand together they can also stand together so how would you solve this problem so first thing that comes to your mind is that uh, most basic approach that you are going to have every single person stand in one line and go in front of the scale and then you are going to measure every single person one by one and in the end you would be able to find out that which person weighs slightly higher than all the other person and in this case you find this person x to weight slightly higher and you return your answer so your solution did give the perfect answer that makes sense yeah no issues with that was this the most efficient solution of course not what could be a better approach where you can uh, make some adjustments so you can imagine the first first place where you are going to make some adjustments is that in this scenario you actually have to use the scale 51 times so can you bring this number down and uh, yes of course we can bring this number down uh, so the logical solution in this case would be that you actually start creating three groups now for these three groups what you can do is you can create one group of 25 people you can create another group of 25 people and the third group will only have one single person left out you can have these done at randomly uh, so you are just um, following the procedure now what you would do is you would take these 25 people put them on a scale then you would take the second 25 people put them on the scale as well uh, for the third single out person you don't need to put that person on the scale now imagine that we know for sure that there are 50 people who have exact same weight and there is one person who has slightly higher weight which means there could be three possibilities amongst these results that we got that uh, either these two weights are same one weight is greater than the other or the uh, one weight is less than the other so amongst these three possibilities 
you can determine so okay let's say for the first possibility if you find that both the weights are equal to each other which means by the sheer luck you found out the perfect group which all 50 people has the exact same weight and so that's why their combined weight is going to be same so the person who was odd one out would actually be the person with the least amount of, or like slightly higher weight second uh, consider is consideration is that let's say that if this group has higher weight so the only condition this group can have higher weight if the person with slightly higher weight let's say the person x it belongs to this group that is the only scenario where this group will have the higher weight and same goes in this scenario where this group will have that person x but in either case you would be able to determine a person x a group with person x and currently you have 25 people where one person weighs slightly higher than all the other people so again you can repeat the same process again so this time you would create three groups uh one group of 12 person but other another, another group of 12 people and then one single group with just one person again you would try to measure their weights if they are equal which means this one is person x that you are looking for if one is greater than or the less than the other one which means whichever group has the higher weight again you are going to repeat the same process and eventually in one or two tries so let's take uh, for an example so this time you have 12 people which means you can we can make a group of uh, let's say five people five people and then two people so again if there are uh, same number of people you would be able to find the results if there are uh, not same group which means that uh, person x lies over here and you can find that out quite easily if that is not the case whichever the group has higher weight would contain person x and again for the five people you will repeat the same process so would create a group of two people two people and just one left out person and eventually you would be able to find that person x quite easily so in this scenario if we see that how many number of times we have to use scale it is significantly reduced why because at every single iteration we are getting rid of half of the people so in the first iteration we were for sure able to say that these 26 people are uh, all the people with the exact same weight so person x only belongs to these 25 people in the second example we were able to say that person x only belongs to these 12 people which means we got rid of another 13 people and same goes in this scenario so if you see previously in the previous approach we were using scale 51 times for the 51 number of people but in this scenario for with our better approach we for 51 people we are hardly using scale for maybe like 8 to 10 times before we encounter the answer so this solution was actually working on big o of n uh, number of equations why because for every single person we had to use scale once but in this scenario we brought it down to big o of log n so with every single uh, computation we were eliminating half of the people from the group and we were coming closer to the answer so this makes a significant difference and this is what your interviewer is trying to ask you and is trying to see you. now in this case we didn't even use any data structures we didn't even use any algorithms but you are wrong we actually did use some data structure so in this case you can understand that maybe in order to record weight uh, you might you might want to keep track of that so then you can use an array or some other uh, data structure like that uh, in terms of algorithm we were actually using a binary search algorithm uh, where every single time we were dividing half of the uh, uh, inputs and eliminating them and then coming up with the solution so see this is what kind of questions you can expect in your interview and you need to have a sound knowledge of not only data structures and algorithms but also your problem solving abilities and this is why uh, preparing for technical interviews is a huge task because you need to have a very sound knowledge of these two on top of that you need problem solving uh, abilities uh, you need to have great communication skills you need to show that what you are thinking or what you are communicating plus you need to know that what are the trade-offs you are going to make so that's why not only technical interviews are a great way to understand a person but also it builds you a better programmer because when you are going through that this rigorous preparation you are going to definitely learn quite a lot quite a lot of things and it can be great for your career as well now soon uh, the purpose of making this video is that uh, i am actually creating an entire guide 
on everything related to technical interviews and i'm probably going to post that very soon it is it will be around somewhere around uh four to six hours of course and uh, i want everyone to have the tools so that they can prepare better and this is just a, a teaser of the actual course that is about to come so uh hope you find it useful and let me know what else can i do uh thank you so much for that